how to increase cash flow in real estate. Hi, I'm Paul McGuire, and I'm gonna show you how to increase the value of real estate right here, and also how you can improve your ability to get money out of the property, get your money back that you spent on the property, and increase your wealth by doing these simple steps. So here we go. I'm gonna show you a formula that demonstrates by raising the rents just a small amount, you can increase the value of the property. I'm gonna show you four different things that you could do to increase the cash flow immediately. And I'm gonna to explain to you why it's important that you get your cash flow high as possible for you to maintain and operate your rental property. So one of the things that most people think about in increasing income in a property is to raise rents. And yes, that is the main way that most people increase their income in the property and commonly done around the country. So let's go through the basic formula first. How do you increase the value of the property? How do you increase the cash flow of the property, which is related to value? You have to increase the income or decrease the expenses. So let's talk first about increasing income. The first way to increase your income is to raise your rents. When you raise rents, you need to ensure that when you raise them, you don't cause people to move out, so you have a mass exodus, and then you have to come up with a lot of cash to renovate and put new tenants in. It's often said, keep it small, get it all. If you keep your rent increases small and tolerable, over time, people can tolerate it. Somebody usually doesn't move out for 30 to $50 a month rent increase for a building that's you know $1,000 a month in rent. So we try to keep in rent increases under 10%. So when you do rent increases, we want to keep rent increases, rent increase between three, five, seven, 10% annually. This is probably the range for most people. Now, in some states that have rent control, you're gonna to have to go by whatever the local ordinance is for rent control. In California, they have statewide rent control now. In Oregon, the same. So you have to follow the law and make sure that you increase rents according to what is allowed. Some areas have no rent control at all. So again, check with your local realtor, your local attorney, uh, your local city government or state government, and they should be able to tell you what the rules are for rent control, if any. But these are the ranges you wanna keep it in because you don't want to have a lot of vacancies. One of the rules of raising rents is you don't wanna raise everybody's rent at the same time, typically because if you're gonna put in a rent increase of say seven or 10%, you don't want everybody to move in out at the same time if they aren't able to pay it. And you wanna stagger your rent increases. So if there is a move out or two, you can absorb it and re-rent that unit. Let's say for example, that you raised all the rents on a building and you had say 20 units and you raised everybody's rents and four people moved out, you just lost right, a good portion of your building. So if you had 20 units and you raised, say, three of the rents one month and then four of the rents the next and three of the rent, you know, and stagger them, that tends to be more prudent and easier for tenants to absorb and easier on you if somebody moves out as an investor. So now let's talk about some ways to increase rental income that you may not have thought of. One of those is putting in rubs. What are rubs? Rub means residential, utility billing service called rubs. There's several companies that do this around the country. And what they do is they take your utility bill, water, sewer, trash, and they figure out through a formula of passing that through to tenants. You may need to adjust your rental agreement to allow for this. You may have to give a 30 day notice of change of terms of tenancy and your realtor or your attorney can help you with that on how to do that or your local association or your management company. With rubs, what we do is we now take and we get additional income. So besides rents, we now have rubs. So rubs is a way to increase income above the line of the expenses to get additional money. The next way that we can increase revenue is adding laundry. Laundry services are often used to be quarter operated, but now most of them, they use a card or an app. And there's companies that could do that for you that provide the, the laundry for you and pay for it. Now, 
One of the things I've seen in some of the buildings is I had under capacity for laundry or I needed new equipment. And some of these companies, if you ask them, will negotiate with you for a new five-year contract, for example. They will give you five, six, seven thousand dollars on an apartment building to help you increase and improve your laundry room, and they'll put new improved equipment in there for you on a new lease. If you're talking about a smaller property like a fourplex, like I have a fiveplex, I added paid laundry downstairs, then maybe that gives me an extra seventy-five to hundred dollars a month. So let's just call it $100 a month, okay? And then on rubs, let's say that that gives me an extra, I don't know, let's say $400 a month, okay? So $400 a month. So we've increased this property just on this small example, $400 on rubs and $100 on laundry. What's another way that you can increase value or increase rents or cash flow? Charging for parking. So some of the older buildings that I own built in the 60s, you know, people only had one car. Okay, today we might have three cars with a person in a two bedroom, you know, and those cars got to park somewhere. If there's not enough room on the street, then they want to park in the complex. Or if there's problems with break-ins in the street, they want to park in the complex. Or if the street's too far, they want to park in the complex, right? So if only they have one parking space per unit, but you have additional parking, you could charge for parking, okay? So we're going to say we get an extra $100 for parking, maybe $25 a month for four spaces. So now we're up to $600, okay? Now, what's the next thing you could do to increase cash flow in your rental property? Well, late fees mean that the tenant didn't pay the property on time. So on a lot of rental agreements, what you could do is if a person, say the rent's 1000 and they're late, maybe it's a $30 late fee or 40 or 50. I see them as high as $70, $80 on a, on a $1,500 rental agreement. They're common. Late fees increase your property value. So let's say uh, on the average, you get another $100 in late fees, depending on the size of your building, okay? And people can be late for many reasons, but those are late fees. So there's four things besides rent, utility, Laundry, parking, and late fees, okay? And there are others, but let's just talk about those four for now. So what we've seen here is increase the cash flow by 700 approximately per month times 12 is $8,400 a year. We've increased the cash flow. Now, that's gonna be something that's gonna be very important in a minute, which I'm gonna show you. But first, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because this is the type of stuff I'm going to be showing you every day, how you can make money in your rental property, and you can learn how to increase your wealth, refinance your properties, get your cash back and buy more properties, exchange properties, and the whole host of other things. So please subscribe so I can help you. So now we're going to go into expenses, okay? What are some of the ways that you can decrease expenses, all right? One of the main ways to decrease expenses for water is to look at toilets. We want low flow toilets. Toilets that don't use as much water. Some of these older toilets use a ton of water. You can use less water by using low flow toilets. If you can't afford to change the toilets, you can put a brick in the tank or two, which cuts down the volume of water and thus less water goes through your system. Another one is low flow showers and other things that can be done to decrease your expenses. Another one is lighting, okay? You have solar lighting now. You can also uh, add solar panels to a property to decrease your lighting in and around the property, as well as um, using low bulbs that use less energy but have a lot of output in terms of lighting, okay? Now you say, well, you know, how much am I gonna save on that? Well, maybe on water and sewer, you might save, let's say, $400 a year here. And maybe on lighting, maybe you save $200 uh, there. So maybe you save an extra $600 a year or maybe more, maybe less on those items. OK, but all that's going to add up and we're going to show you how in just a minute. Next on expenses is management. OK. Don't be afraid to talk to your management company and negotiate a fee. You may be paying 6% if you give them additional properties. Maybe they'll go to five, maybe they'll go to four. So you wanna make sure that you constantly are looking at your expenses and one of those expenses is management. So if you could cut management by say half a percent of your gross, okay, that could be a significant amount of money at the end of the year, 
all right? Another one uh, way to cut expenses is by gardening or landscaping, okay? You got to go out and get bids. You may be paying somebody $250 for landscaping on a, say, an apartment building or $70 and find somebody that can do it for $40 or $30. See, all this stuff adds up, okay? It's important to keep your expenses down. Now, some of you say, Paul, $20 a month? Yeah, $20 a month over five properties, $100 a month, $1,200 a year. In five years, that's six grand, okay? Six grand for this, 10 grand for that, four grand for this, it all adds up, okay? And it also decreases your expense in operating so that your property has more value. Now we're gonna talk about if you increase your cash flow, how that translates into an increase in value in your property, which builds your wealth and allows you to refinance cash out. So in this example that we went through, we came up with $700 a month in increased income and we came up with an extra $600 a year by cutting these two expenses as an example. Let's say we also on our management, we got a cut. So just so this all works, let's say we got $100 off a month or $80 off a month. So that gave us an extra 6,000 here and an extra thousand. So that gave us an extra $10,000 in increased income. So I'm gonna get a new piece of paper and I'm gonna show you what that means to you in terms of your net worth, your value of your building, and your ability to borrow, which are all critical and the reason why you wanna increase cash flow. So we have 10,000 and when we divide it by 0.06, which is the cap rate for the area, that adds an increase in value of $166,667. So that's the importance of increasing your income and decreasing your expenses, all right? If I could borrow 70% of this on a cash out refi is 70,000 and 70% 70 of 60 is 42 and 4,200. So uh, that's roughly 116,200 that I can now borrow and get cash out of my property. Do you see the importance of increasing your cash flow and decreasing your expenses? By a simple $10,000 on the NOI, net operating income in the end, divided by six gives me an increase in value of the property of 166,667. If I can go out and borrow from the bank, which I usually can, 70% of that, that gives me 116,200 in money that I could borrow by a simple rent increase, okay, that was absorbable by the tenants because I'm paying attention to my property and I'm keeping the cash flow and I'm moving it towards market if it's under market or at market. This is what goes on every day. The reason you want to own real estate is because by you increasing the cash flow, you increase the actual value of the property. Now, the more real estate you own, typically rents are rising over time with inflation two, three, four percent. Okay? So if I can increase the cash flow on a property that brings in, say, $100,000 a year, if I can increase it 3% to 5% a year, right? It's now 103,000, okay? Then 105,000, okay? So those little increases can continue to increase the value of your property, all right? And it's important that you as an investor pay attention to your rents and decrease your expenses as best you can and increase your income as best you can to provide that extra cash flow, which will give you additional value on your building. One of the videos you should also watch, which will help you, is uh, how to hire a property manager, which I've already shot. Go ahead and watch that now, and that'll give you an idea of, of how to hire somebody and what they should be doing, and a good idea of what you should be paying them, which I also talked about before.